What's up, guys? It's Whiskey. I can't do it. I was going to try to do it like Mira, but I suck at it. But this is Whiskey Website Wednesday, guys. Uh, welcome. Uh, I'm Gaush. This is Anish. Clearly not Mira. Uh, unless Mira cut her hair and grew a beard. But yes, he will be joining us today as Mira is... She I don't know what she's doing. Theory. I have no clue what she's, she's doing. She's gone. She just decided that we're doing it today. So today we will be drinking Crown Well Reserve. So I'll have him open up the bottle and pour us a, a drink while I give you guys the notes. Yes, so it's Crown Royal Special Reserve. The nose, apparently it's rich and complex with a slight apple flavor and floral tones. Uh, palette, velvety smooth and mellow with defined oak tones. Uh, rich, spicy flavors of cinnamon and vanilla. And on the finish, it's very expansive and long lasting. Uh, this is uh, another one of D uh, Diageo Brands' uh, Crown Royal Expressions. Uh, they are, it is I think around $60 at the LCBO? Yeah, 60 bucks. So it's a pretty decent price and uh, you've had this before, right? I have had this before. And what did you think about it before? Um, from what I remember, it's a very, very smooth whiskey mm -hmm. and it gets better when you add water. So that's, what I, that's, what, that's something very specific I remember about it, Okay. but uh, it's been like over a year, so. It's oh, well, shot. look forward to trying it. I, I think I don't, oh, I think I don't. I have not tried this whiskey. Let's go Should ahead we and pour some out for the homies, or? No. Oh, okay. We, we, do that. we, have, we have carpets and you know, oh, true. the homies then will be stingy at the boardroom. It's already bad that some of our clients think we drink every Wednesday, which we do. Uh, <laughs> it would be bad if the boardroom smelled like said alcohol. So this is a really deep amber um, color. It's very nice. And you said this was a little bit higher in the whiskey content, uh, sorry, alcohol content, so maybe 40 No, so that was the uh, Northern. Sorry guys, that's my alarm for our scrum, which we are skipping right now. Yeah, that's the uh, Northern Harvest uh -huh. that has 45%. Okay. Uh, this is actually just uh, a 40%. Okay, so yeah. their, their usual 40% uh, alcohol. Yeah. I do smell the apple, but I don't smell the floral. Actually. I just get the hint of vanilla as well. We'll try it. Cheers. Cheers. We'll try it neat first and then water. You get the oak. Yeah, you Ooh. do. It is an expansive and long lasting finish. It is. Yeah. Let me try it with some water. We're going to talk about sales. So what happens after you get the leads through the door? I mean, you, great. You got, you know, you did, you came to outside the box. We got you the leads. They're coming through the door. You don't know what to do with them now. So how do you convert these leads into paying customers? Uh, how do you approach that sales conversation? How do you approach, you know, the initial phone call, the discovery meeting and everything behind it? So we'll talk to Nish about that and we'll kind of go back and forth with what we've found over the years as have worked with our clients and what they're looking for in those initial meetings. Let's start off with, okay, cool. Someone just saw one of our ads, clicked on the ad went to our website, it's like, all right, cool, I like these guys, I just fill out a contact form. What what happens then, what do you do? Okay, so yeah, after after the contact uh, has filled out the form, mm -hmm. in our case, we would follow up with a phone call, yeah. um, and then if they don't reply, uh, we send a, we, we send them a follow-up mail, yeah. right? And essentially all we're really, we're, all we're trying to talk to them about is, uh, why did they fill out that form? Why did they contact us? Mm -hmm. um, what their what is their business about? And usually, it, it really depends on which campaign we're talking about. Yeah. But um, if it's a if it's about marketing, so whether it be search engine optimization, Google AdWords, or uh, social media, then then the conversation looks and and sounds very different than. Uh, a website conversation, okay, right? Fair. If it's a website, for example, um, we'll, I'll talk to the client about you know why um, they want a website done, mm -hmm. and the reason why I ask that why question first is because it's important for us to you know understand their goals. Yeah. And so once you understand their goals, it's um, it becomes a lot easier for us to do our job, right? As as the agency, because now we know what they're trying to. do trying to do what they're achieve, what they're what they're trying to achieve yeah. exactly so like there's many different campaigns people can go for there's many things that they can try to achieve some people just want a website for the sake of having a website mm -hmm. uh, those are typically transactional clients for us where mm -hmm. you know they come in they get a website done and that's about it uh -huh. um, then there's the awareness campaigns yeah. where uh, they're talking a lot about their brand they're trying to tell a story and and, and all of that uh, and then there's the clients that want the long-term ROI yeah. Right? They're, they're, try they're the types of clients that are looking to make money off of their website while they're sleeping. Yeah. Right. Okay. So those are the three usually buckets that I, I categorize these clients into. More and more I feel like, you know, are, are these potential clients are understanding the benefits of 
marketing and and, and sales and and you know uh, having that funnel down down pat and yeah. I think that's what's um, sort of driving our growth as well along with theirs mm -hmm. right so something since early on that we used to say to our clients is we grow when you grow exactly. right and that's exactly the way that we've uh, positioned ourselves mm -hmm. in this in this industry is that um, you know we like dealing with small businesses because yeah. we understand all of the um, you know the downside and the upside those are actually all really great points and it's really key that you ask right off the bat that you know what are you why are you trying to do this because without understanding the client's mindset we can't really do what we need to do for them right something that i something interesting i also found is like i know generally here like uh, we don't really like to upsell mm -hmm. we try to just service their needs and see what they need mm -hmm. however like whenever we have the conversation we'll we'll know like hey okay like you want the website like how are you getting the clients to the website because there's no point in having like the way you put it a Ferrari if you're not going to drive it mm -hmm. there you have to drive traffic to the website for them to see it and mm -hmm. if no one ever visits your website does your website even exist yeah. but one interesting conversation I just thought I'd mention uh, I had a few weeks ago with one client was uh, he actually came to us for a website um, and that's the only part of the conversation he had and he had mentioned another uh, marketing avenue he was going to explore so I, I I had made the assumption okay cool he's already thinking about his marketing he just wants a website uh, and a website that converts clients it was an e-commerce website so mm -hmm. uh, it was funny when we sat down afterwards for a discovery meeting he told me he was like I was actually expecting you to like you know upsell me and tell me about the SEO and all that and I had mentioned SEO but we didn't go into like deep detail mm -hmm. uh, because he seemed to already have his marketing plan in place mm -hmm. uh, but he was like oh I thought you were gonna upsell me and I was like I at the moment it seemed like you your budget only permitted for the website and mm -hmm. you already had whatever money put towards your marketing already towards radio and all that so I didn't want to you know just be like I'm trying to drain your money yeah and he's like I appreciate that he's like I actually appreciate the fact that yeah. you didn't come at me like that but at the same time he's like I actually want you to tell me about more of those things if you mm -hmm. can tell me I was like all right sure so like I explained to him what the costs are what the benefits are and I kind of gave it in priority I'm like for him uh, interestingly enough he actually should have gone the social media route because he's selling clothing and all that stuff yeah whereas you know AdWords while it would be amazing for him to have, it may not be the top priority if he's on a limited budget. It's interesting, uh, clients even appreciate the fact that you're not just trying to sell to them, rather you're trying to understand their needs and uh, build something for that. Yeah. Like how, how do you go about figuring out what to give, what to, uh, you know, they might come to you for a website, but when do you decide that they don't realize uh, they the, need more? The loss, like, you know. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Your scenario there makes a lot of sense to me because I've had many of those yeah. where you know they come in they're expecting a certain price and um, for me it's just like well the price that you walked in with uh, either thinking or saying or whatever it, it's not exactly enough to do everything mm -hmm. so we have we then have to make a conscious decision to say you know what we're going to you know as salespeople go after the uh, the website and maybe the social media or the website and SEO or whatever we feel is going to be most impactful mm -hmm. and deliver the most uh, return on investment for the client yeah. when, when anyone's spending money um, on these marketing campaigns they want to know that they're getting something in return exactly. right yeah. so again if it was an awareness campaign for example I would definitely say hands down go social media because mm -hmm. that's where you're going to get the most awareness mm -hmm. um, a search engine optimize a search engine optimization campaign isn't going to really do that for you mm -hmm. it's more so along the lines of someone searching for a someone specific, who's already aware Exactly. Yeah. And especially for those companies that, you know, are selling the uh, branded clothing and mm -hmm. stuff like that, that's all awareness mm -hmm. because, you know, people don't know of XYZ clothing company. Yeah. They know about Nike, they know about Adidas, but that's because these are lifelong brands, household names that they've been around for their whole lives. Yeah. Right? For these uh, other companies like, you know, contractors or um, real estate companies and so on, a lot of that has to do with the actual projects that they're working on or um, the actual uh, type of real estate that they're working with. That's where we would need to sort of um, position ourselves in a way that, you know, we know who the target market is and then we put their, their company in front of that target market. So how do we, so like I know actually how we do it, but I think maybe we can speak to how we try to do it for clients. Um, basically, how do we 
make sure we get the right information on the website enough to get them to want to call us or you know fill out the contact form mm -hmm. while not inundating them with too much and then knowing what to say on the phone because I think I found some clients have the problem of okay like now again we're getting them the leads before they weren't even getting leads so they yeah. don't really have to think about it right yeah they were closing whoever because of referrals because they didn't do a good job but they're not really good at this stuff right yeah. and so now they're getting all these leads coming through the door but they're not converting it because what do they do? Like, uh, do I call? Do I just email back? Uh, mm -hmm. What do I say? What do I talk about? How do I not go too into it? Uh, like, how, how do you go about it? Because I know for myself, mm -hmm. a lot of the times I like to keep it high level on that first conversation, not to kind of flood them with too much. Mm -hmm. And then once they seem like, okay, they we're vibing and they like understand where we're coming from, I try to invite them into the office. So A, they can see our workspace, understand mm -hmm. how we work that, you know, we're not farming out this this work, rather we're doing it ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then uh, actually sit down face to face and, you know, present them the numbers, present them samples and actually show them what we can do. Something I've realized over, over the years of doing this is that, you know, the people that generally need it the most, like the sales or the, the numbers or whatever it is, those are generally also the laziest people <laughs> to to come to the table with anything, right? Fair enough, yeah. And the reason why is because, actually, you know what, maybe not laziest, maybe they're overwhelmed, okay. maybe they're um, maybe they're just scared, uh -huh. because this was, this was me five years ago, yeah. like, like, I picked up the phone I remember this so clearly I picked up the phone and I was like hey there and it was a cold call so this person's like who the hell are you yeah. right so like um anyways I, I startled <laughs> myself and I, I hung up the phone and I was like yeah and then like I just pretended like it never happened you know and then her on used to make fun of me for like years but anyways I'm gonna make fun of him oh absolutely so yeah like I mean when it when it comes to these clients and and clients in general uh whether they're yours or mine it I think the main thing that we have to take back from here is that, you know, it really, it's dependent on your business. Mm -hmm. If you are dealing with, um, if you are a daycare company mm -hmm. or if you're an uh, indoor playground or whatever, you need to have that touch point with the parents, yeah, right? Exactly. So you need to call them. If they're saying, hey, I want to, you know, get uh, 10 kids into your playground for a uh, birthday party for mm -hmm. four hours, you need to call that parent, yeah. right? Because they're not... By the time they read your email, they've already dialed you know four other numbers, yes, um, and, and that's that's it's speed, yeah, right? Yeah. Everything's about speed at this point in time. It, it's how quickly are you going to contact that client? We've lost clients, yeah, in terms of speed as well because we say we'll get back to you within twenty four hours. Yeah. Sometimes it's like three seconds later we're giving these people a call. Yeah. Sometimes it's you know twelve hours later. Yeah. Um, if it's overnight, right? So it really it's just about speed. So number one, definitely speed is key. Uh, number two, I think that um, the questions you're asking the client, mm -hmm. right, is going to be very important in terms of your success. Uh -huh. uh, it, it literally dictates whether or not you'll do well on your campaign or not. Yeah. And the reason for that is because you, most people, most forms are name, email, phone number, notes, yeah. right? Now, that's great for someone that just wants to get all the leads and then literally wants to deal with the tire kickers as we call them in our industry mm -hmm. and you know just pick up a phone and say hey how's it going okay this isn't for us or this isn't for you and then okay next one yeah. right on the flip side you could qualify your lead mm -hmm. right and qualifying your lead would mean essentially asking more questions that are relevant to your business and whatever they're looking for mm -hmm. so for example in our business uh, we could ask you know annual revenue because we could get a good gauge of how large the client is. We could ask if they have a current website mm -hmm. because then we could go and look at their current website um, and so on. Like those are just qualifying questions for us and, and our industry because now we have a better idea who, of what this client looks like, mm -hmm. right? After that is, again, it, it comes down to your follow-up. Mm -hmm. the, the key is in the follow-up. Yeah. Um, if a person doesn't answer your call the first time, you need to contact them again that is just key, yeah, right? You need to you need to cut you need to get back to them, um, you know, within two days or a day later, and say, hey, tried to call you, never picked up. Are you still interested? Mm -hmm. Right. Those are basically the steps that yeah. I would sort of go along with. And then, of course, depending on how the conversation goes, you sort of get them through the door mm -hmm. um, in terms of a discovery meeting or yeah. whatever it is, and, and then go from there. Even with the revenue question and all that, they're really relevant because, you know, you don't want to be presenting like a $50,000 website to them 
if their budget is only like five thousand or something like that, where yeah. you know it might not like it just might scare them off too, and thinking there are no other options, and they might just be scared to call anyone. Yeah. What I like to do is I tailor the approach. I'm like, all right, cool. So you're in this kind of range. Like, let's talk about this. Uh, hey, okay, you want to spend more? This is how what we can do for you. You want to spend less? Okay, let's try to fit it in your budget. So it's yeah. always a you, you want to be flexible, but at the same time you want to like and understanding of the client. Um, but yeah, it's exactly what he said. You want to get back to the client as soon as possible, whether you're a contractor, a babysitter, a playground place, whatever it is. Like uh, you know, you get the lead comes to the door. Try to make sure you have at least one person who are get, who's getting all the leads that are able to contact them right away. If you can't have one person, maybe you have it go to multiple emails, and you just have a system where you know if Nish doesn't uh, email back, like I'll see that it hasn't been answered, and I get to it. So, but as long as you guys can get back to your leads, because um, once our job is done, uh, we can't answer the phones for you. Uh, I mean, we'd love to, but we'd have to hire even more people. But we can only generate the leads and the money, the potential money comes through the door, but at the end of the day, you're the end game. You're the end, of the, you're the productivity. You are the, the end of that line where you close that deal. And that's really on you. So um, we're just trying, we were, since we've been talking a lot about digital marketing and how to get the leads through the door, we figured today, uh, since Nish is on, we'll talk about how to close those de deals once outside the box, shameless plug, has sent you uh, some great uh, deals. But um, verdict on the whiskey? Uh, you know what? I like it. Yeah, I, I think it's a great buy, especially at yeah. $60. It's, a, a, it's an interesting taste. It's Canadian, and Crown Royal. Yeah, I mean, I liked it too. It's very, uh, it's an interesting flavor. I think I was reading that you, could, this is not one of the ones that I would put in a cocktail, but some of the Crown Royals are actually really uh, malleable to good cocktails as well. So I mean, it's something yeah. you can check out. Um, but thanks guys. Uh, you can always uh, email us at think at outside the box. Or this is at Anish at outside the box or Gaush at outside the box. If you have any questions about sales or marketing, digital marketing, generating leads, whiskey, whatever the hell you want to talk about. To be honest, we're, uh, we may not be free, but we'll make time to answer our emails. Uh, thanks true. again, man. Uh, cheers. Cheers, man. Thank you. Um, if you guys have any questions, email us and uh, have a good one, guys.